So how do you improve upon something that is already great? Simple. You make it out of steel. Hey guys, I'm Jay and this is the Ganzo Firebird FH13. And as usual, we'll get into what I like about this and then we'll talk about some of the potential deal breakers. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the specs. These are measurements that I had personally taken myself. So those of you interested, good spot to pause. Let's take care of those size comparisons and we're gonna start out with the Spyderco PM2 and another Spyderco. This is the Endura 4. How about the CRKT M16? Moving on to Benchmade and the 940 and the Bug Out. Here is a Kaiser and this is the Bag Lighter. I think one more should probably take care of it and that is going to be the Zero Tolerance ZT 0450. So if you are familiar with the Ganzo Firebird FH11, then you're going to be familiar with this FH13 because for the most part, all of the dimensions are the same with just a couple differences that we are going to talk about. So starting out with the blade, you are looking at three and a half inch drop point uh, that is made from CPM D2 blade steel. It does feature a, a flat grind with a really, really nice black wash finish that is going to go ahead and uh, it's going to help just hide the wear and tear. The blade thickness is about 3.4 millimeters and a, a blade width, so from the spine to sharpened edge across, is 0.85 inches. The sharpening choil here is very, very well executed. Deployment is going to be accomplished solely with just the, the flipper tab that you see here. And yes, this blade is riding on a ball bearing pivot. And the detent here, yes, it is very strong. I am unable to shake this open. Now the action here is absolutely fantastic, just like the FH-11. So this will drop shut with just a little bit of that, a uh, little bit of shake and bake there. And you saw that you are able to perform, for those of you that like to do that thumbnail closure, where you let the tab, the flipper tab hit your nail, and then you just go ahead and boop, shake her the rest of the way close. You can do that. Now once deployed, that the frame lock, it is, it's locking up at about, what do you guys think about? Uh, we'll call that about 15%. And let me go ahead and check. Oh yeah, that lockup is solid. No play in any direction. Now notice the, the lock bar does have uh, some chamfering going on on the inside, so it is very, very easy to, uh, to get at. Now unfortunately for us uh, lefties, the FH11 is it's unable to tolerate any kind of lock bar pressure during deployment. So you can see here, as soon as I kind of push down on the lock bar with my thumb, yeah, I am unable to deploy the blade as soon as I let off. Yeah, so that just uh, kind of stinks. Again, that's gonna affect uh, more lefties than anything. You can see here now the centering is almost just about dead on. Well done, Ganzo. There's gonna be just two areas of jimping, one here on the flipper tab, and the other is gonna be just a little bit here on the on the blade spine. Now moving on down to the to the handle, you can see. I have a medium sized hand and I can fit all of my fingers on there with even just a little bit uh, little bit of room to spare. On the 4.6 inch long 
stainless steel, black wash finished scales. There is absolutely no sharp edges anywhere on this handle. I mean, everything that should be rounded or chamfered is. Now, unfortunately, because these scales are stainless steel, there's not going to be much traction. And they are, the scales are flat as opposed to the, the G10 version that has the, the concave scales. These are going to be flat and, well, kind of smooth. Just like the FH11, now the FH13 here is very easy to disassemble with you're just looking at the two body screws and of course the one pivot and you do not have to remove the pocket clip when you disassemble this. Always like to see that. Speaking of that pocket clip, you can see it is going to be, it's tip up only for righties hey look at that we got lefty love for lefties as well thank you and that clip is of course uh deep carry now measured across this is going to have a closed width of right at almost an exact one inch width and that handle thickness very very impressive 0 0.40 which is way less than the G10 FH11, which had a handle thickness of 0.52. Before I go ahead and toss this up on the scale, I just wanted to go ahead and show you. It is, for the most part, it's going to be open construction with just that, uh, that small backspacer, which also happens to house that kind of hidden lanyard post which i like to see because it's it's not really taking away any any uh, handle room away from you now something i was absolutely shocked to see was that if you look on the inside there can you see that yeah look at that both actually both scales have been skeletonized so yeah quite a bit of material was removed in an effort to to keep the weight down and you're not going to believe this 3.9 ounces which is the exact same weight as the G10 FH11 now it's also it's going to be about the equivalent of let's see one, two, three, four AA batteries. That's a little on the light side at 3.5. Five AA batteries, you can see, or the same weight as the Kaiser Beg Lighter. Oh, hey guys, really quick, if you could do me a favor and go ahead, click on that subscribe button if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point and if you enjoyed this video and you got any value from it, thumbs up, would you please? Thank you. Now, if you are not familiar with the, the FH11, that's okay because I have previously reviewed that knife. If at the end of this video, look up to the corner, you go ahead, click on the icon, and you can watch my full review of the Ganzo Firebird FH11. And before we go, there's something that I just want to go ahead and, and ask you. Now, in, in regards to the FH11 and the FH13 that you see here, which version do you actually like the best? The G10 or maybe the carbon fiber laminate? Or is the stainless steel your favorite one? Let me know. Comment section down below. Now, unfortunately, we do have to talk about just some of the potential deal breakers, but fear not, there's only three. The first potential deal breaker is going to be regarding the stainless steel scales and the lack of texturing. Yeah, it just it makes these just feel a little on the slick side. Next potential deal breaker. Now, if, you, if I can draw your attention to the, the lock bar here, there's no over-travel stop, which basically just means that 
you're able to this frame lock you can pretty much just bend it out as far as you want and it, it, potentially you could bend it out too far not a huge deal but it is it is a deal last potential deal breaker is going to be regarding again the lock bar and the fact that it's unable to tolerate any lock bar pressure of any kind. So where does that leave us with the Ganzo Firebird FH-13? Well, to be honest, I was really, really nervous about it, uh, them releasing this in a stainless steel version kind of like i don't for those of you that uh you know gamers out there that play video games and you know there's 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 game video games that are designed for the pc and then some of those games they'll get ported over to let's say like an xbox version and sometimes that ported version is not not as good and that's exactly the way that i i felt about this. I was really concerned that the action would be terrible, that it would be ridiculously, well, at least heavier than the G10 version because it's stainless steel. Happy to report, none of that occurred. I mean, this is just, it's fantastic. I, again, it's, they've approved upon something that is already great. And you can find the stainless steel version from Power Cutlery. I picked it up from them for about 25 bucks. So that's pretty darn good. I do like that this features a, a black wash finish on the blade because on the FH11 that had just like a like a high polish satin finish and that thing smudges would show up so quickly. I really like that this is going to hide some of the uh, wear and tear from everyday use. Plus, I mean, it's Z2 blaze steel, which doesn't have the best corrosion resistance. So it's always nice to have some kind of a coating on a D2 blade. I would say, yeah, go ahead and pick one up, especially if you have not purchased, already purchased, the G10 FH11 version. Absolutely. I mean, for a couple bucks more, you're getting stainless steel scales. It doesn't get much better than this.